Welcome to Electron Online. At first sight, somebody may say, well, I, I can believe, I can accept that Einstein said that all light will travel at the same speed regardless of how it's observed by any observer from any reference frame. Light travels at sea, no matter what the source is doing, no matter what the observer is doing. Okay, we can accept that. Let's say we assume for a moment that is indeed true. If we assume that to be true, something very strange will happen. Time will be dependent upon what reference frame you're in. And that's a very strange outcome of that. And this experiment here will show us why that is so. So let's say, for example, that we have an experiment on board of a railroad car and it's traveling quite fast. Let's say that the railroad car is traveling at 0.8 C. So there's a very fast locomotive pulling this car. And we remove the side panel of the railroad car so we can look into that railroad car and see what's happening. And hopefully the observers inside the railroad car won't fall out at that high speed. So here's observer B traveling along with the moving reference frame, we'll call that S prime. And here we have an observer that's stationary next to the tracks to observe this experiment as it whizzes by at very high speed. And so this is now what we would call the stationary reference frame S. So they're both observing the same experiment. Now what is the experiment? Well, the experiment is having a source, a light source, beam a beam of light towards the ceiling where there's a mirror. It will bounce off the mirror. It will come back down, down, it'll come back down and hit a detector. And both observer B and observer A have a stopwatch in their hand and they're watching this experiment. So as soon as the light leaves, both observer click their stopwatch. The light will hit the mirror. It will come back down. When it comes back down, they will both hit the stopwatch. And what time will they see on the stopwatch? And it turns out it will not be the same. And this is why. First of all, we can use the equation that distance equals velocity times time, which means that time equals distance divided by velocity, which means that the amount of time that observer B observes is the amount of is the time that it took for the light to go from there to there and back. So the distance traveled, if we assume that h is the height of the car, so h is the total distance in one direction, then we can say that the time as measured by B is equal to the path traveled by the light which is two times h, because it has to go up and has to come back down. And then we divide that by the velocity at which the light travels. And of course, according to Einstein, every observer sees the light traveling at c. So that would be the time as measured by b. Now what would be the time as measured by a? Well, since the train is moving quite fast, as seen by a, the light beam would not be going straight up, but it would be going at some angle until it hits the ceiling and it would be coming back down. By the time the, the light hits the detector here, the detector would have moved quite a distance because the train is moving at very high velocity. How fast is the train moving? Well, since the train is moving at 0.8 C relative to observer A, we can then say that according to observer A, the distance here that this detector has traveled, the distance is equal to velocity times time. In this case, the distance would be equal to u times the time as measured by a. So u times t a so this is the distance traveled. So how far would this distance be if I draw a triangle right here? Then this distance here, of course, would be half of that. So this here would be considered one half u times t as measured by a. All right, so how far did the light beam travel according to observer A? Well, it traveled across along this diagonal right here. And using the Pythagorean theorem, we can say that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or this here would be equal to the square root of this quantity squared, which is H squared plus this quantity squared, which is U T sub A divided by two quantity squared. So that would be the distance of that diagonal, of course. The light would have to travel this distance and this distance, so we'll multiply this times 2. So the time observed by A, time observed by A, which is equal to the distance, which is 2 times this quantity, which is the square root of h squared plus the quantity u times t sub a over 2 quantity squared, and the whole thing divided by the speed of light c. Now notice that Time for B is 2h over C. Time for A would be 2h over C. If this term went to 0, the 2 would be the same. But since this term is not equal to 0, the two times are not the same. They're different. This is actually a longer time than B. Now, how are we going to relate those two to each other? Let's go ahead and solve for time of A in terms of time of B or time of B in terms of time of A, whichever we want to do. And so let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, notice here that if I solve this for H, I can write that h is equal to c times time of b 
divided by 2. If I square both sides, I get h squared is equal to the quantity c t sub b over 2 quantity squared. And so I can replace h squared by this term right here. So let's do that. So now we have t sub a is equal to 2 times the square root of, instead of h squared, I will write c t sub b over 2 quantity squared plus the quantity u t sub a over 2 quantity squared and the whole thing divided by c. All right, first of all, I think I can make some adjustment right away, some simplification, because I can factor out a 1 over 2 squared, that would be 1 over 4, and of course I take the square root, that would be 1 over 2, and then the 2's would cancel out, so I can say that t sub a is equal to 2 times the square root of 1 over 2 squared, which is 4, times, and I'm going to put a bracket here, that would be c t sub b quantity squared, plus u t sub a quantity squared, and the whole thing divided by c, and then you can say that this and this will cancel. And I can cross multiply the c with the t sub a here, so I can write c times t sub a equals the square root of c t sub b quantity squared plus u t sub a quantity squared. So now I have to solve this for t sub a in terms of t sub b or t sub b in terms of t sub a. We'll see how it comes out. But the best way to do that here would be to square both sides. So let's go ahead and square both sides. And let's move it over here. When I square both sides, I get c squared t sub a squared is equal to the radical will disappear. And then put c squared t sub b squared plus u squared t sub a squared. All right, so let's move all the terms that have a t sub a to one side and lift t sub b on the other side. So that gives us a c squared t sub a squared minus u squared t sub a squared is equal to c squared t sub b squared. And I can factor out a t sub a, so I end up with a t sub a squared times c squared minus u squared is equal to c squared times t sub b squared. What I'm going to do now is divide both sides of the equation by c squared. If I do that, I get the following. I get t sub a squared times c squared minus u squared over c squared equals t sub b squared. All right, so now I'm going to factor this into that, and I get t sub a squared times 1 minus u squared over c squared is equal to t sub b squared. And finally, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. If I do that, I get t sub a uh, times the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared is equal to t sub b. And finally, I can solve for t sub a. I can say that the time as observed by a is equal to the time as observed by observer b divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared divided by c squared. And let's put a box around that. With other words, u is the velocity of the moving reference frame, c is the speed of light, t sub b is the time as measured by the observer who is on the reference frame where the experiment happens, so that's the true time according to observer b, and t sub a is the time observed by observer a, is seen as seen by an observer in the stationary reference frame looking into the moving reference frame, and this is the true time of observer a. They're both true times and they're not equal to each other. Matter of fact, Let's see what happens. What if u becomes very, very big? Let's say, in our example, it was 0.8c. Let's find out if, let's say, the experiment lasts for one second for observer b, what will be the duration of that same experiment for observer a? So let's go ahead and try that as an example. So example, let's say that u is equal to 0.8c. So t, and then we we'll also say that t sub b is equal to one second. Let's go and find out what t sub a is equal to. So t sub a is equal to 1 second divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared, that would be 0.8c, and the quantity squared divided by c squared. So when we simplify that, this is equal to 1 second divided by the square root of 1 minus, that would be c squared divided by c squared, it would cancel, we get 0 0.64, which is equal to 1 second, divided by the square root of 0 0.36, 
and that would be equal to one second divided by 0 0.6 and if we divide 0 0.6 into that we get let's see here we get one point that would be should have brought my calculator but without a calculator see how far I can get so that would be one divided by 0 0.6 that would be one 0 0.6 0, that would be 446 goes into that six times so it looks like 1.67 seconds Wow, um, that's quite a difference. So observer B will measure that to be one second, observer A will measure that to be 1.67 seconds. And both are correct, and that's the strange thing of it all. It's not like one is the real time and the other is a fictitious time, they're actually both correct times. Both observers will absolutely measure the correct time, but it will be different. And that's the whole reason why this is so is because the assumption and now the postulate of Einstein, which we now know to be true, is that all observers see light moving at the speed of light, regardless of what the source is doing and regardless of what the observers are doing. And that's the outcome of that. Time is relative in special relativity. And time is relative when things move at very high speeds. And that's how it's done.